Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, I am going to discuss the biggest problem with Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, at the moment. And that is generic card design. Now, hear me out. I'm not saying that generic cards are inherently a bad thing, but I am saying that all of the splite cards being able to be utilized in just about every deck to some effect is probably an issue. The fact that Tear Element can go into Splite Elf and then bring back a Merrily to go into the opponent's, you know, fusion summoning on the opponent's turn to go into multiple Dragostapelios, which both of those are generic for some reason, is uh, a bit worrisome. We can also look at something like Garura, which is a card that exists. If you haven't read this card, read it. And then remember that Super Polymerization exists. And then remember that this card is absolutely broken. This is a massive issue that is plaguing Yu-Gi-Oh! at the moment, and it is just the general nature of how many boss monsters, not just boss monsters, but just cards in general, as you can see up here, that are entirely generic. Um, not all of these are generic, but something like Jet Synchron, entirely generic. Something like Magician Souls, you need one other spellcaster in your entire deck that is level 6 or higher, and then you can get a free plus 2, basically. <laughs> Especially if you're playing something like a continuous spell. Yeah, this is pretty good. Also, it dumps a spellcaster for free to the grave as a, an additional free special summon. Kind of crazy, right? Uh, yeah, so there are obviously archetypes that are also generic um, in nature. Like, for example, the first Dark Lord technically only requires three Dark Fairies. Which, to be fair, that is pretty specific. But, I mean, it doesn't require Dark Lords. It's not archetypal in nature. And if you're playing a fairy strategy, you probably want to try and summon this. I think this is great card design. It's restrictive enough to where you can still utilize it outside of its archetype to great effect. Like, for example, in Despia, you can still make this without utilizing the Dark Lord stuff to gain additional benefits. That being the fact that you can no longer target fairy monsters you control. Fantastic. Uh, no one's going to be able to interrupt your Alubur with something like an Imperm if you bring it back off of this guy. Pretty nice. However, we also have things like, for example, Baron. Baron de Flore has an archetype. The Flore Synchron archetype exists. It's specifically designed to summon out this card, and it does a pretty decent job at that. But because of the fact that Baron de Flore is, in fact, generic, that means that there's no real point in playing that specific archetype. And it's not something where it's like, oh, you can only summon it with a wind monster. No, you can just summon it in general whenever. So how often do you actually see this utilized in a more specific archetype? Like, for example, the floor archetype. Rarely never. So there's no incentive to ever play that deck when a million other decks can do the same thing, but better. This is an incredible boss monster that everyone can utilize. Now, I don't necessarily think that that is inherently a bad thing, but I do think that it really disincentivizes specifically utilizing specific archetypes to get a specific reward. Again, dinosaurs and dark lords are two great examples. Their boss monsters are technically generic. You can use Ultimate Conductor Tyranno as well as the first dark lord outside of their own archetype, but they are specifically more useful when they are within the archetype. UCT can technically be used with any dinosaur deck as long as you are willing to make a non-dinosaur, you could just special summon this out. As well as first dark lord as we previously mentioned is technically able to be played in other decks that utilize dark fairies, like for example, again, Despia. And these are two powerful payoffs. Whereas, why do that when you could always just go True King? Now, granted, it's banned, but when it was a when it was around, when Virtual World could abuse it, why would you ever play True King or even something like Generator that specifically is meant to summon out level nines when you could just synchro spam into two level nines and then make this guy? You know, because all you need is. 2 plus level 9 monsters. Now, this card is a mistake anyway, so that's fine. But still, I, I mean, look at something like the Boral Loads, or the Boral cards in general. Boral Sword, Boral Load, uh, Boral End, all of the Well, yeah, all of them. All of them are generic. Now, Boral Load is the most egregious of them because it is a level 8 synchro that only requires one Link monster in order to do anything and have a pretty decent effect due to the fact that, you know, 
it gets an Omni Negate. That's pretty good. So having a generic level 8, which is one of the best levels, to be to be frank. Uh, level 8 Synchro, that has an Omni Negate. That seems pretty good. At least level 10 is more difficult to summon. All right. And then we can look at, uh, of course, the biggest offender of all of this, Chris Strong Halka Fibrax. Just needs a tuner. Any two monsters and a tuner. Doesn't even have to be effect monsters. Doesn't have to have a Crystron tuner. Doesn't have to summon a Crystron. Doesn't have to synchro into a Crystron tuner. Just entirely generic. All of its effects entirely generic. This is the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh. Nothing is pinned in any way. You can basically use any card to go into any card. There's very few restrictions to incentivize playing a specific strategy or playing a specific deck. Why play the Crystron archetype when, yeah, it has one of the best cards available to it, but you don't need to play it in that archetype. You can play it in anything, right? And I, I don't know. I, I don't think this is necessarily the biggest issue or the biggest problem currently facing Yu-Gi-Oh!, but I do think that it is a massive issue moving forward, and it is something to be aware of, I guess. Uh, just, again, this is mostly because I was watching a Terra Element versus Splite matchup, and the Terra Element player made better use of Splite Elf. Why? Why is that the case? That's all. I just... I don't want to say that, like, I wish things were more locked into archetypes, but I wish that there were more restrictions on specifically generic monsters, right? Uh, it just feels like there, there isn't really a challenge to anything. And I think th that, like, creating a deck that centers around a specific card uh, is, one, fun, uh, but two, really helps differentiate the good players from the bad, right? Especially when it comes to deck building, right? You can really see who's a good deck builder and who's not based on, you know, if they're able to utilize the restrictions given on a monster to, in fact, make it better, right? Uh, again, something like, uh, a big example to me is like the Megaliths. Uh, I've seen Gale Dogra used in Megalith, which Gale Dogra happens to not have a hard once per turn, and it can just send any extra deck monster, which, again, a bit strong, but the person that I've seen use it is a is someone with Megaliths to make them a little bit better, since you don't really need your normal summon in that deck. Um, but yeah, stuff like that where it's, it's just utilizing the insane advantage of just like, knowing cards and knowing the restrictions and like what have yous um that really stand apart from other games and other decks and other everything i don't know just something i thought of thought i'd let you know and something i don't like um so anyway i hope that you guys did indeed enjoy this episode and that this was insightful um if you have anything to add to this, leave a comment down below. All of that fun stuff. Make sure to like the video, yada yada. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.